What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Don with the Don Francho. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Guess not. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the stock market. What are we watching for tomorrow? What it did today. Why I'm swinging something today. So, first things first, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, bell, all the YouTube stuff, courses, mentorship, all that. Links are in the description. Check it out if you want. How'd you guys do today? Let's kick it off with tech. I'm going to break down all these features you see over over there, actually. And then after that, if there's enough thumbs up, we'll turn to the chat. I'll break down some tickers for you guys. <laughs> Watching for the 625 bounce. <laughs> I need to pick a different color. This is, this is going incognito for a second. Hang on. There we go. Let's change that to... There we go. Now I look like I have a cracked screen. Got too much going on here, though. I don't like it. Okay, so we'll start with tech. Yesterday, the bulls showed up. They showed up. They said it's time to buy. Created the W pattern. Uh, you know, just because we make basic shapes in our mind. Can you break down my future? <laughs> you hope that isn't a head and shoulders forming on tech? Yeah. Too much fear mongering, that's what you're looking out for. Beginning of an uptrend, I'm thinking. But what he's saying is that, so if this is going to be a, a head and shoulders, we'll watch out for something like this. And then we get this move. Let me come on down. And then everyone's different. Sometimes this one. Th th one more time. <laughs> I know I'm not crazy. I'm clicking that. Uh, everyone will say like, oh, this shoulder makes a lower high. This one does the same. It's probably going to go about the same. Uh, but after that, we get the breakdown. Because we're going to go bearish. If that's going to play out, you'll just watch these levels right here. I already have them drawn out for you. But what I think, that very well could be what happens. But the bulls showed up, and I want to focus on just right now, today. Let's delete these distraction zone. Okay. If you're ever going to focus on anything, it's this right there. The fact that they showed up and we hung out. Some sellers showed up above, buyers showed up below. We can even widen that out a little bit. I don't wanna get crazy with it. So, storyline, psychology behind it. The bulls showed up, they said it's time for a reversal. And the bears didn't really argue it. Like, the, the bulls taunting them. Hey, you don't believe us? Make your move. And, and no, that's where we get that balance. The whole market, indecisive right now. Uh, I know we had the bond auction today, but it looks like nothing exciting came out of that, right? There wasn't a lot of fear or panic. We tagged a zone that we would be looking for sellers anyway. The sellers showed up. They got to right here. They didn't even make it out of the driveway. If I was bearish, I would be nervous right now. When things hit a zone and go sideways like that, I look for the continuation, which is why I'm thinking tomorrow we might actually get the, uh, the push up. Yesterday in the mentorship group, I talked about it selling off and today would be the the dip buy right we would be green we'd pull back let's watch for the dip buy also we said that last week it did exactly what i said and we gapped up <laughs> and then we melted off so we don't want to just load up in case that were to happen again but the bull showed up and then we went sideways so stocks are going to pull pull back or pull over either way they're going to cool off after a bull run so what it looks like to me right now is, well, we got the rally and we got the base. I mean, one of two things is going to happen next. Rally, base, rally, or rally, base, drop. So what I'm watching for is actually just tech to be bullish above, bearish below. <laughs> uh, it's down 14%. Beware of the Ides of March. There's something like that for every month. Guess the stimulus being passed wasn't a sell the news after all. It wasn't a anyone cares about news. Who cares about stimulus? 
How many times have we heard it? We, we beat that horse, to, we beat the dead horse, whatever that saying is. I'm not really a surprise that we didn't care too much. Rally base, whoosh, moon. <laughs> Roblox, break it down, please. It IPO'd today. What can we zone out? There's only one Ides of March, guys. <laughs> uh, let's delete that. I need that bad juju around here. So, as far as tech, that's what I'm looking out for. Yeah, the QQQ downtrend resistance. Yes. If you can draw a line, congrats. You did it. So, for whatever reason, the seller showed up here. We need them to get by it. Oh, we got a plenty of reasons to still be bearish. The, the reason why I'm saying, let, let's look out now. We, well, this is what happened last week, right? So we pushed up. We got up here. Thought that was going to be the dip buy. We melted off. In a downtrend, I had the video, how to buy the dip. What's a downtrend? Lower lows and lower highs. And it's a downtrend until that changes. Lower lows, lower highs. What's something we didn't do yesterday? We did not make a lower low. There's strike one. Right now, as far as lower highs, we're arguing which high are you going to go off of? This one or this one? We're creating that argument right here. So a pullback and above here is still going to be a higher low. A, the beginning signs of a trend change. That's where the speculation comes into play. Right? Like, okay, some of you guys are loading the boat up short because you think that's going to pan out. Some of you guys are thinking, all right, we might be changing here. We got the correction. Now we saw the buyer show up and the bears didn't really argue it. Now I might speculate and go long. Both require risk management. Both are looking at the exact same chart. One's taking the bull approach. One's taking the bear approach. I draw, <laughs> I draw a line at shapes. Learned how to trade in preschool. <laughs> Get one of those red and blue balls. You're doing so good. <laughs> I don't want to brag or anything, but when uh, my parents got me a red and blue ball, I was able to match the shapes right from the beginning. So I knew I was destined to be a pattern trader. <laughs> Don the goat, shout out, vanilla baby. Double bottom. That is a double bottom. I don't know where Alan's at. Give me that Roblox. <laughs> All right. Uh, I bet someone gonna get someone gonna butt in Roblox ticker breakdown. Since that's already coming up in the topic, in the IPO, what's it gonna do? It there you have it. That's what it did. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Woo. What are you doing with that? Oh wait. <laughs> I'll be back in August. I'm going back into hibernation. I will attack the market possibly July, most certainly September and October. James, come on, put the honey down. Switch to bull mode. Put your jar of honey away. Put a Fibonacci Elliott wave on it. <laughs> Uh, what do you guys, you guys are already hyping this up way too much. The fact that that's even been called out in the conversation already multiple times. It IPO'd today. Day one. Boom. Opened here. We sold up down here. We pushed all up to here. And in one hour, we closed right here. Did a little nothing here. We sold off. And after hours, we got a little bit of a push up. That is the whole story. The whole thing. An IPO at all times is just that... If you're going to talk about stocks or gambling, an IPO is. You don't know where the buyers are at. You don't know where the sellers are at. You don't know where everyone feels comfortable buying and selling this at. You could talk about a valuation and all that, but who cares? I, don't, I couldn't care less about this company. Or, for instance, any IPO. Right? I don't care what you think it's worth. Because I don't know who agrees with you. I don't mean to just go hard on you guys for calling this one out. <laughs> I plan on breaking it down anyway tonight, but it's an IPO. 
whether it's value, I don't care if it's valued at, it, it's supposed to be at $120 a share. It's supposed to open up at 45 a share. Open up at, look at like 60, I thought, 61, 64. Open up at 64. And then it pushed up and it kind of bled off a little bit. What about the Coinbase IPO? Uh, I like, the only time I like IPOs are, um, the ones I really like, I'll play the Coinbase IPO, but rewind and watch that again because everything I just said is going to happen with the Coinbase IPO. All the same factors. I will. I'll put some money in. It's the same money I would take to a roulette table at a casino, right? I like it. If there's a lot of hype, I try to buy and catch some of that move up. I'll put my stop in the green. Meat cranium. The only way to intraday trade an IPO, oh, they said in your opinion, <laughs> is with the VWAP. Sure. Hey, everyone's got the, got their ways. Oh, I don't want to knock it. But there's nothing to chart out. You're just going for it. You're shooting from the hip. See where it goes. It's incredibly overvalued. Revenue, one billion. Market cap, forty billion. So it's overvalued. Well, it looks like they don't agree with you because they bought it. I'm not trying to blow blow steam up this tick or anything, but Kathy actually bought five hundred nineteen thousand shares today for thirty three million. Oh, Kathy! Kathy bought it. She alone put that green candle there, and then everyone else sold it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to quit roasting you, roasting you guys. Uh, on a serious note, that's Roblox is the IPO today. Kathy bought it. That's cool. I'm surprised it didn't just continue to blast off, and we close at 120. Um, so, let's see. First day IPO trading, still playing with a rattlesnake. Yeah, you see what happens. It's a game of hot potato. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> question for you how you play an IPO uh, you don't you just buy and pray well let's get back to the futures uh, if I were to do anything about this it, it's right here for that first hour we, we got to there we stayed inside this we, we went up we went down ultimately if we want to just chop all the noise out the sellers were here the buyers were here I don't care if you think this is overvalued this is overvalued the whole thing's undervalued here's what happened the buyers showed up all of them. more buyers and sellers here more sellers than buyers here game of tug of war here let's see where that rope goes someone will get drugged through the mud question is are you gonna let go if that rope starts to tilt the other way roblox 300 by the end of the month rocket ship personally i don't trade anything until that 625 ema shows up <laughs> uh, all right let's go as far as the why the dollar get oh we're on the 15 minute why still let the dollar gap up nonsense so i am i'm trading the dollar short right now and i did that by buying the uh, the british pound u.s dollar so i'm along this right now um and that's it I bet it gaps to 300 tomorrow. Fill the gaps that don't exist yet. <laughs> did you trade GameStop today? I did not. No, I, I like GameStop when a bunch of people were in there just giving away free money. It's not one I'm going to probably keep trading. As long as the dollar's still short, that still holds. We rock and roll. We push up. If we base out inside here, I'm adding to my position. What are your thoughts on British people? <laughs> What kind of question is that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that sounds funny. That might be just incredibly racist, but um, just a funny question. 
If Roblox stays flat for 625 days, strong buy. <laughs> this, is, this is not financial advice. AMC still no. We'll have to check out AMC. Uh, I guess right now, if, if you're short the dollar, you one thing you want to check out or, or kind of be aware of, it's kind of a, a bull flag pattern going on. So if you're traditional supply and demand, there's a tiny rally in base right here. So you might actually uh, just zone that out. And what I'd watch out for is a, a bull flag kind of bounce on that. Can I have that? And then we bounce it and take off up. Uh, gold. Gold's just a real craptastic play. I know everyone loves it, and the world's going to come to an end. The sky is falling, and at, at Walmart, we're going to have chop saws just to cut our little gold bricks to pay for our toilet paper for the next pandemic. But right now, it's not. It's still selling off. And we're testing that zone from the bottom right now. We're just inside this situation we were in last time. So, it's just not a good... I don't think it's worth it. I think gold's got some proving to do before I were to were to buy it. If I were to buy it right now, my stop would just be below here. AMC missed the earnings by two dollars and fifty cents per share. To thirty we go. If you think that matters in earnings, probably new. <laughs> All right. Gold equals long zombie apocalypse. We could use that right now. Would we really hurt from a few less? You know? I'm talking like the walking dead zombies. If they show up and they, they take you out, it's kind of one of those. You, you had a good run while you were here. Stimulus is a band-aid to what's coming in four to six months. Oh, ominous. Oh, <laughs> what's coming in four to six months. I don't mean to roast you guys. I don't know why. We're just letting the filter off tonight. Hopefully you guys are still here. More than normal is, but... Uh, Palpatine. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, as far as uh, the miners go, a little bit of a gap up today with that push. I don't know if I'd even trade it. I just don't know if it's worth it. Like, are we going to start reversing here and then, what, just get smoked the next day? There's not enough movement for me to trade JNUG or JDST, so I'd just hang tight for a little bit. I'm coming four to six months. <laughs> Steve, you're telling me to mark it, but I don't know what am I marking. I'll write it on the calendar, and we'll talk about this in four to six months. <laughs> four to six months? I don't even have plans for the weekend. Are you talking about inflation? I am swinging Tesla and Palantir. And Facebook and Costco. At least silver looks somewhat okay. Um, GDP at 130% because of stimulus. So, what do you hold accounting? T Q Q Q Q Q Q S Q Q Q or Tesla, Steve. Which one do you hold accounting? Uh, uh, I will, Berardi. I will answer that. What do you think of V Y G V F? Crypto app on the App Store expected to grow ten thousand percent this year. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Um, Hey, if we're not whole accounting something, I don't know, what are we even doing as traders? We whole account, we roll the dice, and we argue with investors. All right. Oh, you guys are giving me some good comments. We're almost at all-time highs, short the top. No one's ever gone broke doing that. You know, I probably wouldn't care about silver... Overall, silver's been very horizontal. If I were to trade silver right now, 
if I bought it, my stop would still be down. My position would be so small that my stop would be way down here. That's where my risk would be at, and I would add on to that bottom zone. That's my alert down there for that. Yeah, I can, J-Wise. Get baited. <laughs> I don't know why I'm excited. Just hang on a second. Gee, I could give me two seconds, and then I, I'll let me break down these features real quick. It'll be the first one I break down. We hold account and then bag hold. This is the way. <laughs> not a profitable way, but uh, it's not a bad way. Not a bad way. It's been ten thousand dollars. VY. Hang on, real quick. On this VY GVF, did financial education just do a, a video about that? Don't lie to me. It's not a loss until you sell. <laughs> That's the biggest lie someone's ever told you. Oil. I, I would have bounced here. Ah, shout out to the mentorship group. You guys even asked me if I was in Gush. And I was going to go buy it. And I didn't. You guys love asking me questions right right before I just get busy. Dang, that would have been a good trade. Uh, I still like it. I, I still like oil. I'm still be bullish. We just bounced out of that zone. I think that's going to be a higher low, so we're looking for higher highs. Probably up there at that zone. So if we're breaking down Gush or Drip... Uh, it would be gush. That'd be my trade. We just keep rolling that up. When choosing call options to buy in a red day, what do you look for? Short dated, long dated, in the money, out of the money? It's actually at the money. At the money and three, four weeks out. My sweet spot. I like the 30 day, thirty days out at the money if I'm looking to, to buy in a zone. and uh, But if... If it's like awkwardly in the middle, I go less than 30 days, not over. I tried to remind you. You did, <laughs> and I was about to go buy Gush. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm failing. Biotech hanging out. So bull showed up, and we based out. That's a speed bump zone for speed bump. That's a speed bump play. We actually tagged that zone. That, to me, looks bullish. This is, this is exactly what a speed bump zone looks like. I think we're going to go zone to zone. It kind of already did. Well, it did. But, you know, we if we're going to see a red candle and they show up in the speed bump zone, I'm fine with that. That's where I don't get worried. I don't worry about a reversal right there. I just kind of make sure I scoop my stops up right there. Definitely it was Jeremy. <laughs> was wondering your thoughts. Yeah, I've had a few people ask me about that. Uh, and usually when Jeremy puts out a video, I've seen some of his titles lately. Like, I put a million in this. I'll know about it because my DMs go up. What are his thoughts? Going to go up a billion dollars? All right, tan. Uh, hit that zone, sold off. I bet ENPH is what's leading the boat on this one. A little bit. So as long as that continues up, I, as long as tan stays above 149, I bet tan might start rock and rolling. I'd be looking for a higher low here. Hopefully bullish once we get above that zone, though. That, that's ultimately going to be probably the, the change, the signal. If this pulls back, makes a higher low somewhere in here tomorrow. We turn around, break above that. That's our trend up. At the money, three to four weeks is solid. Then make sure the spread isn't ridiculous. Yeah. You look like David Blaine. Is that good or bad? <laughs> Had a few too many tonight. Really like FedEx next week. Check FedEx. You guys hear that? I might lose power soon. We got some storms coming in. And the bad thing about solar is it doesn't really work when the sun's not up. Um, well, I absolutely hate everyone that's about to call that a megaphone pattern. Despise it almost, actually. What a rocking time for IWM. So we had the leg up, clearly a higher high from this last one. So now if IWM pulls back, we're, we're confidently again looking for that lower 
Why is that so up there? Um, you know, we were in that channel down. What's going to be what, what changes, right? So lower lows, lower highs. Well, we didn't make a lower low and we didn't make a lower high. So right now, as we pull back, we'll watch out for every one of these zones. I mean, a pullback right here, the Fibonacci people probably love that blue zone right here. And a nice deep pull. I guess I have a couple solid red days in it. Get it right there. I'd say it's probably the dip buy again. This megaphone pattern bullish. It's stupid is what it is. <laughs> Is that trending up or down? Yes. That's the megaphone pattern. Short solar when the power goes out. <laughs> Stupid solar panels. They didn't collect that radiation from the sun that's on the other side of the earth right now. <laughs> Could you break down? Colton, did he did Melin like the megaphone pattern? <laughs> that's funny all right so iwm still bullish holding above that zone just rocking i bet stimulus is only gonna a lot of these companies needed some some stimulus we need to reopen back up so i think this still has a little bit, a little bit more bullish action in it but you know i uh wouldn't be afraid of some red candles it's had a nice just a pretty straight leg up And if you're donating, calling out tickers, that is the list I'm writing down right now. So we're almost there. I tried to Google megaphone pattern yesterday. Nothing. I'm like, but Don mentioned it, so it must be there. It's because it's a stupid pattern. <laughs> Even Google thinks it's stupid. All right. We know about tech. Tech, yes. Still at its lower high point. Is that why we bounced? Did we sell off because there's zones here? We knew there would be sellers right here. The seller showed up. Again, no follow through. So this is going to be my indicator tomorrow. This purple box, we are bullish above, bearish below. And if we are bearish, I'm looking for a higher low. I do not, do not want it testing that line. While that might be a triple bottom, I might be just an even more solid floor. The, the confidence in the bulls, not probably going to be there if we test that again. Right? We need to start bouncing and getting away from it, not hitting it over and over again. We are going to jackhammer our way right through that and, and drop down. Then we are still in trouble. We are just now seeing the beginning signs of a change. We had some green days here, followed by a lot more red. I decided to swing green because we went sideways today. Again, we knew the sellers would be there. They showed up. They brought no one. Right? They're like the 300 Spartans. Good job. But they all died in the end. He taught us the pattern is stupid. Oh, <laughs> all right. Here we are. Hello, my friend. Hit that zone. Sellers brought it right down there. Buyers at that zone picked it right back up. Hit that same zone looking for sellers, and they showed up. Buyers instantly turned it to a wick. Tried it again. Already a wick. So now. From a, a supply and demand, a, a balance factor, right? If there's 100 buyers and 100 sellers, it goes nowhere. If there's 100 buyers and 99 sellers, it goes up. If the second it starts to tilt one way or the other, we push that way. And it looks like we're exhausting all the sellers and we might get that push up. Still need to watch out for this area. It is, it's not broken until it is. Right? I know that sounds stupid and simple, but we haven't broken above it until we do. So that might look bullish. We might exhaust sellers. There might only be 12 people trading it right now because it's just after hours. Right? The futures market is very slow right now. we got a lot of time before the market opens. So we're looking for that to get above. I'm kind of curious if we tag the all-time highs. Um, or if you do look at the options chain, uh, there's expected a $10 move in, in the SPY. And we're almost there to the top. But like we did last week, we did the exact same thing. We got just above thinking, all right, we're probably going to hit, hit that, that top mark. And we ran for the other side. Like We ran like someone pulled the fire alarm. So I think we're, we're bullish. You can see IWM is leading the way. The second tech decides what it wants to do, you'll probably see the S&P follow suit. 
I've heard of a rally based rally, but is there a is there a melt off base rally? It's a drop base rally. <laughs> yeah. Don't you have my course? Come on, we went over that in there. You have the drop base drop. You have the uh, drop base rally. Uh, rally base drop. Rally base rally. It'll do one of those. But the cool thing is, when it gets to that base, what do we have there? We have, if we want to go long, stops right there. If we want to go short, stops right there. That's where you put your money where your mouth is. All right, we're at the base. Now what? What are some previous signs? What are some, what, what's the reasoning? What's the excuse? What's the story? Why is Wall Street Bets talking about it? Why is CNBC talking about it? Why should I care? What story are they trying to sell you? Those would be your clues, your multipliers as to why you might pick one or the other. Place your bets, stops in place, balls in motion. Have you had dinner? Negative. Six, I'm a little excited today or what? ARC added 150K Palantir again. Well, hopefully. I'm in that one. The Bitcoin. Oh, we need to get above this. I like it. I like where it's going. Let's break out. Uh, we got the Bitcoin halving, so there's supposed to be a huge sell off in September. I, I, I'm going to give you guys this one warning stop watching Bitcoin channels. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I can tell you guys now, there's a reason I'm talking about Bitcoin now and not back then, right? There's a reason I bought it. And even when you guys are making fun of me for buying it at, at the highs at 16,000, even though I bought it before, that's where the jokes came out. Bitcoin's changed. The fact that there's a market adoption to Bitcoin, stop looking at all the past. I'm trying to get into mining and, and wow, is that community just, they're a different breed. Everyone I'm talking to at mining, they, they're they almost scared of this stuff. Um, but with everyone buying this, this is going, this is institutional buying now. This isn't just every little nerd in their, their graphics cards. This isn't just the people who are afraid of the future and the sky is going to fall and this is going to take over the world anymore. This is all institutions now. It's a different ball game. So yes, there's a having of Bitcoin coming up. Makes it a little bit harder to mine, which is why it's going to take forever to mine those Bitcoins all the way out to like what 2140 or something like that. So don't just close your account because we're pulling up on September and you think it's going to drop. Dang, I'll take Bitcoin 16 gear right now. I agree. You can mine on your PC there figure out the software part then just take over the actual mining rig yeah i gotta build the mining rig uh i gotta get a welder i know you don't need to, everyone on these mining rigs man they are i don't want to say cheap <laughs> but don't worry about going there to make millions i saw one guy measure he's like well you can get this zip tie but the smaller zip ties are cheaper like a bag of zip ties like four dollars like i've never actually measured that and uh my mining rig, I think I'm just going to, everyone like does angle iron and they like screw them together. I'm going to cut it to 45 and just weld it together and so it'll look better. My mining rig will look nothing like everyone else's. Let's see. Arc bot Roblox. Oh yeah. If you missed my Roblox rant, rewind to the beginning. Unless I don't have the baby gloves on. So if you're part of the cancel culture, maybe you skip that part. Ethereum still uh, still rocking, kind of basing out. Crypto just had a good day. Jets still hanging right above here, kind of looking like that same breakout. We had that dip down, almost looks borderline like manipulation. Dropped that zone, picked it right back up, looking to break out up. Bitcoin 250k by 2024, if not higher. I, I'm kind of on a very much more bullish path for, for Bitcoin. We'll see though. There's a reason I don't have my whole account in Bitcoin though, right? When you say buy above, sell below, does that mean the candle has to close above or below? Yes. There's ultimately risk tolerances. There's big candles that will come and drop me out because my stop is still there. Um, but so if that, here's the zone, I stop right here, right? It drops down, tags me out, but ends up being a wick that's not a close outside. I'll get back in. I will do that twice. I won't take, the th I won't take three losses on the same trade. What about Dogecoin, huh? 
Everyone who makes mining rigs usually has no idea on graphics cards or how to build things. Yeah, I kind of neither do I. <laughs> am I in that category? You're building a GPU miner? I am. Yeah, so if anyone knows where to find an AMD 6800 graphics card, get at me. <laughs> it'd be a finder's fee. Uh, I think it'd be a cool experience. And for anybody that is in mining, yes, I, you, you buy the coins. I own the coins. Got a whole bunch of them. And uh, this is just going to be fun. I spend way more on cars than I will ever spend on any amount of graphics cards uh, or the solar I have on my roof to power some of it. All right, let's get on with it. Tesla. Tesla Day, I wanted to pull back to that zone. We pulled back and kind of kind of hung out right here. This is where I got in. Very loose stop, so I am still in it. So holding on Tesla, did not get my dip by here. The fact that we pulled back and kind of just did this is ultimately why I just said I'm getting in. Let me ask my friend who works with AMD. Does he need to does he need to appear on on a YouTuber's page that maybe has sixteen thousand subscribers? Just saying, whatever your friend needs, I got him. We'll get the AMC coin flip. Let's do it right now, uh, everyone. I need a a fifty percent like ratio on the thumbs up. Do me a huge solid subscribe bell. You know that drill, and turn the thumbs up blue, and then let's uh, let's break down um, your stop your uh, your stuff. Thought your stop was low of day, yeah, but uh decided against that because of what tech was doing so yeah this wick would have normally tagged me out no oh, this yeah no this one this one would have how loaded are you i bought three corvettes last year so not loaded but a mining rig uh, I'm just not worried about like everyone else's. I'll put it that way. Uh, Neo. I'm not selling any of the stuff I mine anyway. I'm, just, I'm keeping it all. <laughs> Neo holding above that zone. Finally. That's a good sign. It, it, it cracked above it. What you didn't want was an instant rejection. <laughs> that's not that 625. The 625, again, if you're new to my channel, is a joke. Uh, it's from a different video. Uh, let's break down tickets for you guys that donated some... Donated. Was it GIK? Gig Capital? Let's get off this. Are you staying with Tesla? At what loss would you sell? Tomorrow if it breaks? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I don't bag hold. Right? I, uh, uh, I have my investment shares that I'll ride those to zero. Right? I'll sell those in 10 years. We'll see where they're at. Um, but as far as trading goes, I don't want to break in that, that 650 zone at all. I'll get out. I, I love Tesla, but I don't care about when it comes to trading. The numbers are the numbers. Uh, as far as... It, I don't like that that broke that. That was a, a quick little fake out. That would I would have definitely tagged out right here. So right now, if I'm gonna trade this zone, my stop would be it'd be 10:45, right below these wicks. I'd watch. I mean, that's still very much a bear flag on top of lower lows and lower highs. It hasn't changed yet. If you think this is going to be the reversal, you want to get in here. 10:45 would be my stop. I have a video, guys. One percent stop loss, the correct way. It should be linked down below, or there's a playlist called How to Trade. So when I say my stop would be down here, if my entry is here, here, or here, or here. My stop is the same, and I risk the same. I adjust the shares. I explained that video how to do it. Um, but we will struggle up here. What's Tesla? What's Tesla? GIK is a SPAC. BA is killing it. Boeing's amazing. Uh, what SPAC is this? What are they rumored to be? Because it looks like they got ignored. Gerald Peters said Tesla might hit 1300 in a few months. It might hit 300 in a few months. <laughs> One, I'll make a lot. One, I will lose a lot. All right, let's break down. 
Uh, anyway, if, it, if this is a SPAC play, then all you have is gamblers. It's not attached to any company. It's an open shell. There's rumors. Until it's penciled in, all you have is hype. So there's your hype players. You have everybody believing it. So if that news they believe does not happen, it's gone. Like, be careful for trading these, but if it's a SPAC, it's kind of at the bottom. So uh, just remember your risk. Let's not hold account anything. VYGVF. Okay, now this one. Why is Jeremy an OTC all of a sudden? Voyager? Uh, I actually am bullish on this one. I didn't realize this is Voyager. I probably could have put that together. Uh, I, I do like... I like what I'm hearing about them. Uh, so, I guess fundamentally the story behind it. Yeah, as far as the ticker goes... Um... We're, we're definitely holding right here. If I were to buy this, my stop would be down here. It would be it'd be ten ten. I once know a guy who sold his investment shares of Tesla at six sixty one and got back in a few bucks cheaper. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't look at my investing account anymore. Because if I do, I'll start trading it, and I want to just I want to be like all the cool kids. I want to talk about a long-term account because <laughs> I can't trade. Just kidding. Just kidding. I take it back. Uh, no, I'm just going to not look at my uh, investment account anymore for that reason. I'll end up trading it. Marlin Business Services. Someone probably got buttered off that last comment. I can just feel it. I have a long-term because I'm an investor too. Sorry, I'm on one tonight. Excited to talk to you guys. I'm triggered. <laughs> Why is this basing out right here? This has no volume in it, or so earnings, dividend, really hung out right here. The volume in this is either just crap, no one cares about this ticker, or it just kind of bases out. Move. They care to, to get out of it right there. I'd just focus on these. I'd, I'd still be bullish. I guess I wouldn't want it breaking below this at all. I wouldn't want it breaking 16, so 1585 is where my stop would be at. How could you, Don? <laughs> Voyager website says we are a public company. Yeah, on the OTC market. You can focus, zoom in on charts, and control scroll instead of zooming. And Oh, yeah, I know. I just keep forgetting to uh, hold control and do that. Mainstream media has nothing good, nothing but good things to say about AMC. Probably the time to get out. AMC, I promise you guys, a coin flip. I have to get to the mentorship group. Coin flip and breakdown. AMC sold off and held that zone. That's it. So, heads or tails? Like what? Heads it goes up, tails it goes down. This is for you. Oh, we got the heads. It's going up. Okay, check your broker to see if they support the, the over-the-counter stocks. Um, let's see. Version of available cost me. Oh, okay. Could you check out the flow algo and explain what you think of the 32 million GME option call end of day was? Was deep in the money? Um, yes, that's worth it. And then we do have to, I have to get to the mentorship group. So if everyone thumbs up, subscribe. Definitely see me tomorrow. Uh, give me one second. That's a lot. A lot deep in the money. It's interesting. Uh, got it. Whatever. Get out of here. Um, premium. 30 million. So 30 million. Bought it close. April. April 16th. $12 strike. Man, interesting. Um, so the way they bought deep in the money like that, they're taking advantage. I bet as far as deltas go, that's pretty close to a one-to-one -one ratio. Isn't this up there right now? I gotta see what uh, AMC's or um, sorry, GameStop is at. A little bit of options for you guys.
when the first thing I see on a company website is a stock pump and not something about the company, that is some red flags for me. Uh, you you make a pretty valid point there. I, I, I still like them because they're in the crypto space and it sucks that they're an OTC ticker. That That's the only flag for me. Like, why are they not out there? What are we doing? GME. So GME's 200. That, that's got to be a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, what we got? April the 16th. All right, so April 16th, they bought a $12 strike right here. Delta, it's a one-to-one. -one. So they basically spent $30 million on this. And so instead of buying that, how much does this cost? For 100 shares. 255 bucks per share. They spent a little less. They spent a little less buying the option contract than they did buying. So if you're gonna spend thirty million, like you could spend thirty million on shares or the options contract, you'll spend you'll you'll gain a little bit more. If you're gonna spend, you're either gonna spend the same amount and get more with options, or spend less and get the same amount. And if you look at the deltas, that's a that's a one to one ratio. So every dollar, uh, GameStop pushes up so does this particular options contract. So it's the same as shares, going deep in the money like that. So it looks like they're, uh, they're at least bullish on it for another run. If they sold those contracts, you would need to sell, you'd, you would collect 30 million, and for you to keep that 30 million, it would need to fall below $12. You'd have to be extremely bearish for you to sell those contracts. In that case, he just made thirty million, but the never mind because uh, I bet they bought him. Long story short, if if you have thirty million, you're buying the dip. What's the dip? This one, the one that just sold off. The calls just sold off. They bought the dip for thirty million. I said it's bullish. They might be trying to uh, kind of lead you one way, dangle the carrot in front of your face. Hey, thirty million was in here. Get that hype. Uh, now they got to buy shares, uh, you know, to hedge is what created that whole situation when calls started moving the market because it drives order flow. So maybe they're trying to do that to kind of run it up a little bit. They'll collect their money, drop it, short it on the way down. Uh, yeah, we'll check AMC. We got a guy here. Which one? 16th? <laughs> we got a couple... Pretty loaded out right here, though. Looks like a lot more calls being bought than put. <laughs> Ball, Stephen Palantir. Uh, I keep saying we got to go, but hang on. We're going to do XOM, Facebook, Palantir. XOM, still rocking and rolling. Had a nice day to day. If I was in XOM, I am in the investment account. But if I was trading it, I wouldn't want it going below that now. Facebook. Uh, Facebook, I'm telling everybody to watch out for. This is one I'm actually most excited about because of this move right here. The fact that we're snapping back and forth and basing out like that, I think we're winding up for a move up, which is why I'm swinging Facebook. PLTR. Flirting with breaking above that zone. Starting to hopefully curve, get above it. The sellers, zero follow through. So that's why I'm still bullish on this. So I do have to get out of here. Uh, mentorship, we're jumping straight in. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to send the link out right now. Everyone else, as usual, thanks for showing up. Uh, all the links are in the description. Subscribing is 100% free. If you want to watch me live every night, that's the mentorship link down below, uh, which where I'm going to go break down even more tickers. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.